Hi again, this is Eric Tars, Human Rights Program Director at the National Law Center on Homelessness and Poverty, reporting on day three of events around the U.S. Universal Periodic Review by the UN Human Rights Council. Today was another busy day for organizations here in Geneva. Three major side events on U.S. human rights issues helped to bring to light issues from political repression to housing, workers' rights to the war on terror. Additionally, we did a lot of work on the floor of the Human Rights Council, educating foreign governments on our issues and listening in on the council reviews of other countries. Our lobbying is the result of months of hard work, but on the floor, it's surprisingly easy to talk to the delegates who are very approachable. Many said that they knew our names already because of the emails we had been sending earlier in the year, so it's good to know that our work is paying off. Unfortunately, because I was engaged with conversations with other countries, I was unable to attend the political repression panel on which Nahal Zamani of the Center for Constitutional Rights, Salvador Reza of the National Day Laborers Network, Afi Nguaza of the U.S. Human Rights Network's Domestic Repression and Political Prisoner Working Group, and Richard Brown of the San Francisco 8 shared stories of people arrested for their political views in contravention of the most basic principles of the rule of law and non-discrimination that the U.S. is founded upon. Ajamu Baraka and Sarah Poletti of the U.S. Human Rights Network introduced our main panel on a positive note. Is not to uh, to embarrass the U.S. state. Uh, our intent is to tell our stories and to uh, represent our constituencies. I think we would we would all agree that that the United States has done tremendous work leading up to the Universal Periodic Review. Um, our hope is that we see more than just effort going into the process, uh, but what we really see is the real change. Out of the Sharon Hanshaw of Gulf Coast Women for Change led off the discussion because, as was noted, you can't have a conversation about human rights in the U.S. without talking about Katrina. We want displaced individuals to have homes to come back to, but the affordable homes just never came fast enough, and it's still not enough to this day. With Justice Department officials present in the room, Deborah Burton of the Los Angeles Community Action Network testified about the harassment of homeless and poor people of color in Skid Row. Now when I say a littering ticket, you may get a, a ticket for cigarette ashes falling to the ground. You may get a ticket because you're moving too fast on the sidewalk in a wheelchair. You may get a ticket because you're blind, legally blind, but you don't cross the street fast enough. With that being said, you have to make a choice whether you pay for your ticket or you pay your rent where you live. Now, no one chooses to live. Mary Garish at the Vermont Workers' Center talked about the right to health, and Elsie Redmond of the South Austin Coalition Community Council talked about the right to decent work. Chandra Bhatnagar of the ACLU talked about migration issues and applied the human rights framework to issues like racial profiling. Right. Protections are comprehensive, and no one should be left behind or outside their protection. Jacqueline Patterson discussed racial inequities in the context of the Convention on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. Where, there, because of the economic situation, there's 25 members of the family living in a very small home. And this is where the children, this is in a slumber party, this is where they sleep. Alberto Saldamando talked about the long history of abuses against Indian communities. You have, have the international community tell them that there's something wrong with you and you have to change that. You have to be better than that. Our second side event covered accountability in the war on terror. Ian Siderman of the International Committee of Jurists introduced the panel. There's been very little accountability as we hear for any of the violations that have been taking place and, and uh, no accountability for, for higher level officials. And Following comments by Gerald Saberak, Devin Chafee of Human Rights First asked the fundamental question. But how will the United States continue to be able to credibly call on other governments to end impunity for crimes such as torture if it fails to pursue justice for similar abuses committed by U.S. officials. Jamil Dakwar of the ACLU concluded by noting the almost schizophrenic role of the U.S. Very sad. Indeed, the U.S. has led the effort to ban and to fight the use of torture worldwide. And the U.S. in 2006, ironically, under the Bush administration, has contributed more than $6.5 million to the UN Fund for Victims of Torture. And yet, in the United States court system, the, the, because of uh, legal obstacles and hurdles and legal theories that were uh, put forward first by the Bush administration, and some of them were continued by the Obama administration, torture victims 
don't have, did not have their day in court. In the evening, the network posted a film event where footage collected through the USHRN's Testify Project, which allowed individuals all across the U.S. to talk about what human rights means to them was shown. The problem with what happened with public housing post-Katrina was this. All public housing residents in New Orleans were forcibly told to leave their apartments. They did not have a choice. We have huge contracts that have been let for demolition of housing. So if the money's there to demolish, not to rehab, you're going to demolish. The, the action follows the dollar. The night concluded with a panel discussion which showed how everyone's issues all fit because together. many of the issues that I saw on the film um, we face in our community, such as criminalizing you because you're poor, uh, profiling you because you're black or color. From individual conversations with foreign delegations, to our panel discussions, to our film night, we canvassed Geneva today telling the truth about human rights in the U.S. We've already seen the results of a lot of our advocacy as more and more countries are submitting questions that directly reflect our concerns. For more information on those concerns, check out our website, tune in tomorrow, and good night from Geneva.